This is the easiest camera to use for live streams and the quality looks exceptional. But there are some things that you're gonna want to get right in camera to get the most out of it and that's exactly what we're gonna go through in this video, so let's get started. First things first, we gotta talk about power supply. When this camera is plugged in to do live streaming, it will slowly charge from the computer, but it will drain the battery slightly more than the speed at which it's charging. And for that reason, for longer duration streams or video calls, constant power is the way to go. This is Sony's constant power false battery. And for longer streams or longer video conferences, I recommend using this. I'll link it down below because the last thing you wanna have happen is for your camera to die midstream. Next, we're gonna jump into the menu system and we're gonna go to tab five. Over here on page one at the very bottom, power setting option, scroll down to auto power off temperature, set that to high, accept the warning message. Trust me, it makes it sound really bad that your camera's gonna break, it's gonna be fine except that what this is doing is at a certain point, your camera, when it heats up, it'll automatically shut down. It's obviously a bad thing if you're midstream, so we set this to high to extend the amount of time that that can happen. This camera does very well with this category. Your camera's not gonna break, it's gonna be fine, and you're gonna get a long amount that you can put this thing through before you have any issues. Next, using the button on top of the camera, make sure that we cycle over to video mode. It's gonna cycle from photo to video to S and Q. Make sure that we're in video mode. And once we're in video mode, back in the menu system, we're gonna tab over here on tab two. And for shoot mode, tab two, page one, shoot mode, we're gonna bring this to intelligent auto. This isn't my favorite setting for the majority of things that I do with this camera, but for live streaming, I've seen this to be the most consistent and I think it looks great. And right below our shoot mode is gonna be this USB streaming. Once we click that, we're gonna get this menu. And that's essentially just saying connect a USB cable. So you'll have your USB cable plugged into your computer and you're gonna bring that USB-C on the alternate end and plug that into the camera. And now the camera is connected to your computer and set up to be a webcam. And I'm gonna show you exactly what that looks like in Zoom in just one second. Do you like when win situations. I do. I have a ton of ZV-E10 videos on this channel with more planned. So if you'd like to see more videos just like this one, make sure you tap the subscribe button down below. The win for you, I'm gonna keep delivering the best videos that I possibly can. And the win for me, it shows me that these videos are landing with you and you want me to keep them coming. Anyways, on to the next step. I'm gonna show you this last step in Zoom, but it's gonna be similar for any live streaming software or video conferencing software. Check it out. I'm just gonna go into the video settings and choose the camera. So it's gonna default to the, the webcam on the laptop in this instance. And then you can see the ZV-E10. When we click that, the ZV-E10 is going to take over. And you're gonna see yourself with an instant upgrade to what the webcam was from the laptop coming out of the ZV-E10. Ridiculously crispy. And we have the added benefit of being able to move the camera around on a tripod and change our angle. I would recommend getting a longer USB-C cable. That way, again, you have that flexibility to move the tripod around and play with your angle. But this camera isn't only great at live streaming. It's also an incredibly capable video camera. So if you wanna get the most out of your ZV-E10 for video, make sure you check out this video next, where I dive into all the best cinematic settings. Anyways, I'll see you in the next one. Take care. See ya.